pjnet.tv. Coming up, it is now Monday when you are seeing this, a pre-recorded edition that was recorded actually on Thursday with a first-time guest. Our bumper's running, we are recording, and we'll count down to Studio 8 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, good evening and welcome to PJNet.TV. This is a special pre-recorded edition. At the time you see this, I will be in the great state, or coming back from, uh, the great state of Alabama, where PJNet.TV has been invited in to uh, do the video work for a God and Country rally, symposium, or seminar, whatever it may be. I'll find out more after I get there. Uh, folks, we have, a, we have a friend of a friend. She is appearing for the first time. She is well known to a good friend and member of the PJNet.TV family, uh, Ben Cooper. And Ben told us about this wonderful ministry of working with, well, I better let her tell you. Her name is Jolene Steele. And uh, Jolene, come on in the studio. Make yourself right at home. Jolene, thanks for accommodating us uh, to do this pre-recorded edition of PJNet.TV. Uh, how do you know Ben? Thank you so much, Coach, for having me. Um, Actually, Ben and I are uh, just getting acquainted through um, some of the Facebook platforms for writers. Uh, and so I've been really uh, following him and, and all of his work and so excited to see some of the good news that he's been posting about his work um, and books in the last couple of days. Uh, so, yeah, and he has been following uh, what I'm doing as well. So it's just really a blessing as writers to be able to continue to uh, support each other and encourage each other's work. But you are not a beekeeper yet. I am not a beekeeper, but yeah. it's sure an interesting <laughs> idea. But I must... my husband's allergic to bee stings, so I don't know Ooh, what he means. Yeah, that would be a, a hindrance. Uh, I just must warn you, people that associate with Ben uh, some of them over time tend to become beekeepers. So <laughs> be on the lookout, be on the lookout. Now, Ben, Ben told us that you have a, a ministry, you have a calling and you, you have actually many, but, uh, I'm curious, uh, you work with kids. So tell us what, tell, tell us your journey in working with children, especially in a campground environment. Sure. So uh, the ministry is called Camping Stick Kids, and my heart has always been, since a very little girl, the um, idea uh, and heart for Jesus. You know, I can still remember my mom telling me I would line up all my stuffed animals on the end of my bed and lead them to Jesus every day. And I uh, just had a heart for that. I even remember getting beat up every day after school um, because I wouldn't stop putting Jesus Loves You on um, kids' desks at, at school. <laughs> so when I, as I grew um, in the Lord and grew in age, I realized that God had really put a calling on my heart um, to uh, pursue an evangelistic ministry. And uh, so that's, um, the Lord sort of brought this ministry together in a fantastic way, which I'd love to share with you in a little bit. But um, Camping Stick Kids really is an evangelistic ministry, and our goal is to share the gospel one camper at a time. And so the last three years, we've shared the gospel with over 10,000 children. And uh, our goal is actually to share the gospel with 100,000 children in the next five years. That is a lot of kids. Now, now Jolene, I'm, I'm wondering... You know, when you're working with kids, you know, you obviously have got to draw them in and attract them uh, with, you know, fun and games and adventure. Uh, but the goal is to share the gospel. Now, if you just say, hey, kids, uh, come over here and hear how you can accept Jesus Christ, you know, not as many are going to show up. So, uh, so I've seen some ministries get so involved in the attractions, you know, that lure people in that they never get around to the real purpose. How do you walk that tight wire? You know, I really believe that our goal is transformation um, and that we have to be careful that uh, we don't fall into some of the traps of just trying to um, give the kids something fun. However, 
you know, we do have to be in tune with um, the culture and how, uh, what does appeal to children um, and then pursue that uh, with the view of transformation. You said you've reached uh, 100,000 kids over what period of time? Actually, it's 10,000 children over the last five years. And the way that we have done that is uh, we actually, we don't do this as much anymore, but we would go to every homeschool convention, every state fair, um, the Indy 500. Uh, we would go to, in Canada, uh, we would go to um, the Calgary Stampede. Like we would just go to wherever there were lots of people mm -hmm. and we would stand at a booth and we would give away hiking sticks. Um, I have one with me right now. This one I've colored but they're 44 inch hiking sticks and they are raw wood when we give them away. And all they have is the stick and then the gospel story attached with the beads. And we would tell that bead story um, to people and, uh, and whether they said yes or no to receiving Jesus, they walked away with a stick. Well, well, people would line up at our booth our vendors loved us. <laughs> they wanted to see, um, you know, us in their row because we were usually the busiest booth in the row. Forgive my I, ignorance, but tell me the story through the beads quickly. Sure. Um, and so the story goes like this. Um, the gold bead stands for heaven. Gold is for heaven. It's a place we want to go. Not just because the street is paved with gold, which Revelation 21, 21 says it is, but because the great God of the universe is there and he loves us and wants to be with us forever. And then the dark bead represents our sin because the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We can't get to heaven on our own. And so what are we supposed to do? We need a hero. We need a rescuer. And so the red bead stands for the blood of Jesus. Jesus came to die on a cross for you and me so that we could be forgiven of our sins and get to heaven uh, because of his sacrifice. And the white bead stands for forgiveness. And when you believe that Jesus is who he says he uh, claims to be, which is the Son of God, and you believe that you are in need of a Savior because um, you have sinned, as all of us have, you can ask the Lord to forgive you. You can turn from your sins, and you can ask Him to come into your life and be the leader of your life from now on. And then the Bible says that you are washed as clean and pure as snow. And then um, at this point, we always ask people, um, and even children, we might rephrase it, but we will say, not that you would, but if something would happen to you tonight, do you know that you would go to heaven to see Jesus? And then people answer one of two ways, usually, yes or no. If they say yes, we say, how do you know? To affirm that they mm -hmm. understand salvation. If they say no, we say, would you like to know? And if they say, no, I don't want to know, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine, non-confrontational. Um, and uh, But almost always they say, yes, please tell me. And then we get to share with them and give them an opportunity to ask Jesus into their heart and to be the leader of their life. And then the green bead stands for growth. And so this is where you are if you have become a child of God. You are always growing. Um, and so we encourage them to find a local church. We usually have lists of churches for them um, uh, in the area and then um, that they could choose from just because people don't know where to start, right? right. Um, and then we encourage them to find um, you know, other believers um, who uh, understand what has just happened to them and share the story with them. But part of the thing that happened, Coach, is we were going to all of the um, these big conventions, and um, the owners would come to us and say, you can no longer give those sticks to children because children are treating them like weapons. Mm -hmm. So our hearts broke because our joy was to share with the families, but children. So what we ended up doing is um, that's when we started writing the camp curriculum because we really felt like, you know, we wanted to not just share this story, but provide a way for children to know the story and be able to answer questions, the five big questions, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, and then also to be able to take that um, stick home and to be able to share the gospel with their families at home. 
So we started attend, uh, using the curriculum at camps and also um, at homeschool conventions. Um, we've been to a lot of homeschool conventions <laughs> and um, have stood on concrete um, sharing this with you know hundreds of children a day. Um, and it's been a real privilege and a joy to see some of the children who, we had one family who, who came to our booth coach and the mom said, no, no, we're Jewish. We don't believe in Jesus. And she walked away with her little posse of children. And 10 minutes later, these children came back and said, mama said we could hear the story and get a stick as long as you know that we don't think Jesus is the savior. <laughs> so my, actually my, um, 13 year old at the time got to be there and help share the gospel story with this family and these children and they walked away with their sticks it was a seed we know that um but still it was an opportunity to share the gospel well you broke the ice um jolene you said that stick is 44 inches you didn't say 43 you didn't say 45. Mm -hmm. why 44. Well, because it's for children. So I have two of my own and they are the 44 inches um, tall and I can still use it as an adult perfectly fine. But a lot of adults, when they go looking for an official hiking stick, they look for something just a little taller. Mm -hmm. But we found, I mean, our, our main audience is five through eight year olds. So they don't want a stick that's taller than them. So we tried to make it just the right size for them. Well, clearly you've developed a pretty good formula uh, for interact, intersecting and interacting uh, with children, but recently things have changed. How has, You're not going to the Indy 500 this year, Jolene. Oh, uh, no. How have you adapted to the recent changes and, and how has it impacted your ministry? Well, we realized pretty quickly that none of those conventions were going to happen this year. And so what were we going to do? Um, so I started Zoom camp <laughs> and I advertised to every camp we'd been to. And, and also uh, we have a um, beginning relationship with Trail Life USA and American Heritage Girls. And so I contacted the troop leaders that uh, we had already met at some conventions, told them what we were doing, and it was really fun. We had a great time. My son does um, puppetry, and so his little puppet Gordon was sitting right here beside me, and uh, we were able to lead uh, a Zoom camps um, walking through. We did five days uh, for uh, half, well, I think we did 45 minutes each day. Mm -hmm. and walk them through our five-day curriculum uh, right online. And that was super exciting and fun. And then we had the parents and the troop leaders uh, send us back an evaluation because we wanted to know, like, did anyone receive Jesus? Or, you know, what were the children's responses? So that was fun to hear. Well, I, I hope, you know, several have discovered Zoom. Uh, this pandemic has been a real... Um, uh, a real thing for Zoom, and you have found it as well as many others, and I rejoice uh, in so many ways that we're able to use digital media, as we're using now, uh, but it is never going to be a substitute uh, for that in-person uh, contact, and so in some ways it has enhanced ministry, in some ways it has compromised it. Uh, we're just going to have to work with the, with the tools that we have, and you've done well uh, in adapting. Now, you do more than uh, just, you know, give away sticks and tell stories. You actually, uh, well, you have a lot of curriculum, but you also um, have this, sharing the gospel, one camper at a time. Right, and that is our five-day curriculum um, that helps us to walk children through five big questions. It might sound like 10, but they're kind of all put together. So the first uh, the first day answers the questions, um, what is heaven and why do I want to go there? And there's small group um, activities, large group activities, there's skits, there's original music. Um, we've got a digital download page for the leaders to um, be able to access all the digital files that um, uh, we've created as a ministry. Um, and then the second question is, super important because in this day and age um sin 
people are allergic to that word. They don't like the word sin. And so we want to help children answer the question, what is sin and why does it matter? And then the third day is who is Jesus and what has he done for me? And the fourth day is what is forgiveness and how do I get it? And the fifth day is what is growth and how do I do it? Um, and helping the children walk through each day and these questions is super important. Now they earn medals for their hiking sticks for each day, which is super exciting. They have to learn on um, day one, they learn Revelation 2121. And that's the one that talks about the street of the city being paved with gold as pure as transparent glass. And then they learn John 316. I don't know if you can see my stick, but this is the gold medal. And then they earn um, a medal for each day after I they've see. learned the Bible verses and been through the curriculum. And I'll tell you what, you know, many of us have seen these beads in other um, VBSs and all of that, which I think are a fantastic tool. But when kids have earned these medals on their sticks, now it's a vehicle mm -hmm. for the gospel. You know, they, they're not going to lose this stick as quickly as maybe they would lose a bracelet. And when they're out hiking with mm. their friends and family, strangers are going to say, hey, cool stick, tell me about your stick. And suddenly your child is sharing the gospel with strangers. Um, so we just love the, the vehicle of the stick. I'm, I'm falling in love with it too, Jolene. At first I thought, what? <laughs> you know, But I'm now starting to realize just how much strategy has is implicit in this because as you were sharing that i'm thinking okay you've got this stick now if you gave them a bracelet that bracelet would soon be lost or stowed away yep. but that stick uh no no i can just see it in some child's bedroom you know propped up and a constant reminder of the five truths of the beads and the colors uh where the the, the story is is phenomenal folks i hope that you will take note of the website that you see on the screen, campingstickkids.org. Uh, when they go, when you go there, there's a whole lot more than what we've talked about here. Tell us a little bit about what uh, your website has available and how you're using it in your ministry. Well, you're going to find um, a tab for Zoom Camp, which is currently um, not open. But if we have people expressing interest, interest we will run some fall Zoom Camps. Um, you're going to see um, our blog um, and also a handwork tab because we really believe part of ministry is encouraging children in um, working with their hands. Um, so there's some ideas there for you. But then if you go to our shop, you're going to find all of the resources we talked about, um, as well as um, a few other things, like we have um, some hats and some um, balls with the five colors and fun things like that as well. So I, I presume you're somewhere near, Ben is in Pennsylvania, I don't know where you are and you don't need to tell us, but how far away do you project these things when you're traveling? How far have you traveled? Well, I live just outside Chicago, and um, we have been, uh, well, Florida, um, Texas, um, all like North Carolina, South Carolina, all of that. I mean, I think the only place we, and Colorado, I think we just, well, even Oregon, it's Oregon, we haven't actually gone to California, which there's a huge homeschool convention there. Um, and if we pick up homeschool conventions again, um, we'd like to be going, you know, across the whole United States. But now we also have um, a part of our ministry in Canada. So uh, we are uh, in Canada as well. In fact, the first machine that helped us make our sticks was given to us for $3 um, in Canada by a farmer who said, I have this, this big machine, this molder, and it makes anything you want out of wood I don't know what to do with it and my dad's friend was sitting there with his Bible in front of him and my dad had given him three dollars almost a year before that and said Dave I don't know what this is for it's a seed for ministry and Dave flopped open his Bible and said how about three bucks ha 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 sold <laughs> said the farmer <laughs> and that's really how we started making our own hiking sticks um, since then, we have some other vendors that help us because um, after a while, our orders got a little bit steep. Um, so, so um, these sticks uh, start out life as what a two by two, or what's the process? Um, 
You know, boy, I, I wish my dad was here to tell you all about that. Um, I think it's a plank, like a, a two by four. Um, and uh, it goes through the molder machine and we have special blades that mm -hmm. cut the wood into six-sided sticks. Hex um, so it's actually hexagonal. Like hexagon it's hexagonal, and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they all come out the other end. So then we have people who were drilling holes for the leather mm -hmm. strap and sanding them and it's a big production <laughs> but it's all for the lord and for the gospel so i mean my dad especially spent many many hours uh making sticks uh the first couple of years well and, and i get the impression that a lot a lot of love gets poured into just the manufacture of these of these sticks it's not just something you ordered from amazon and you know it's not just a trinket it, it's each one is crafted with love Absolutely. And we really, um, you know, we would get together and we would pray. We'd have a whole weekend of stick making and we'd pray as a team in a circle. You'll see some of those pictures on our website um, for safety first, because those machines are not um, terribly safe. And, um, and then for every child that was about to receive these sticks. Um, and we continue to pray as God sends these sticks out with the gospel message attached to them that, um, people will hear and know and receive Jesus as their Savior. Wow. Well, I, I, I knew when Ben told us about you that we were going to have a good story, and you have, uh, you have paid off in spades, Jolene. Congratulations, and thank you for your ministry. We are out of time, but folks, uh, we've been blessed. Jolene, thank you for not only for your ministry, but thank you for sharing with us, because uh, it was not on my radar, and I've just been blessed knowing the work that you're doing for the kingdom. Thank you. To God be the glory. Stay encouraged. Folks, that was Jolene Steele of CampingStickKids.org, and uh, we are wrapping it up for this edition of PJNet.TV, but we will be back at the bottom of the hour, so we hope you'll stay tuned for that. Uh, on my way out, uh, I would like to pose two questions to you, and you don't have to answer anybody else, but I would ask you to ask yourself these two questions. First, what is the boldest thing that you have ever done for Jesus Christ? And secondly, how long ago was it? Folks, you have just heard testimony of a doer and a worker in the kingdom. There's a lot of work to be done. And if we are to do that, we can never allow ourselves to be satisfied with either answer. <music>